Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United versus Barnsley in the Carabao. It is all happening. Joining me as always is Mr. Joe Smith. Yes, Joe. You have waited for this fixture yes. ever since you were a little boy. And it is here. We are up against Barnsley in the Carabao. I mean, look. If you can take a step back for a sec. Let's just get real, yeah? Let's stop with the nonsense, this yeah? Is, you, you're the only one who's spoke so far. It's your <laughs> nonsense that <laughs> yeah. you're about. Just chill out, right? Okay? I don't know what's up with you. Win against Southampton. You're getting carried away. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, this would represent the ideal opportunity for mm. Eric Tenag to give some players a rest, to have a bit of rotation. We're going to get into the predicted 11 in a minute. Yeah. But you'd expect it to be a bit of a mixture of first team players and maybe some academy and fringe players as well because you don't think you wouldn't expect a manager when he's got I think is it seven games in 22 days yeah. to play his strongest team for all of them especially not in a game against league one opposition no and when you consider how many injuries we had last season it's crucial that he doesn't do that yeah. and I know Ten Hag's very much of the mindset of you pretty much play your best team every week and he, he tends to not rotate <laughs> and I kind of love it as well but also United had what was it 56 injuries last year Okay. so we can't do that certain players in particular who have just come back I think Kobe Mainu, Bruno Fernandes potentially but he just never does get a rest does he but certainly Kobe Mainu, I'd give Martinez a rest as well and I'd, I'd give the fullbacks a rest because we've seen you know Masrawi um, having a bit of cramp delict similar so I think we need to make some changes but it's nice that we've got a few options I know Rasmus Hoyland isn't quite back yet and uh, neither is Luke Shaw but um, I just think that there are people in certain positions where we can give a, a bit of a, a rotation. And I, I stand by the fact that I think that um, Lissandro Martinez, um, Matthias De Ligt, Harry Maguire and Lenny Yoro is the best four centre-backs that anyone's got in the Premier League. I think that's the best starting and backup centre-backs that any team has. Okay. And obviously Yoro isn't fit for this game, but I think we've got some people who are, um, who you know, should be getting a, a bit of a game. And also, not just rotating people out, but rotating people in. I think Mamo Ugarte has to start this game, get him up to speed, get him into the into the sort of style of English football, uh, and just get his fitness up. I think it's perfect. I agree. You know the key to success are the three R's: rotation, rotation rotation as you often tell me mm. talking about rotation Seriously. let's talk about Manchester United's cup record under Eric Tenag it's been very good excellent indeed I mean two FA Cup finals um, a Carabao Cup win yeah. um, he, he takes the, the cup competition seriously as you said there he's always playing a strong team but you know he's, he's sort of been proven right to a certain degree in terms yeah. of how well we've done in the cup competitions how important do you think it is the, this competition for Eric Tenag because in his first season this was the, the first opportunity to win a trophy, mm. was the Carabao, because obviously the finals in February, that's the first trophy, and he did that, and it gave him a little bit of breathing space, because okay, we finished third that season, but then the following season, when things were going wrong, people could go, well, he's already won a trophy, and then when he follows it up with another trophy, people go, well, he's won back-to-back -back trophies, and I was one of those people. Yeah. It has helped him, and the fact that he's been able to div deliver silverware, because I think, had he not won a trophy last season, there's a good chance he'd be out of a job right now. Yeah, I feel like this trophy thing is like, do you know when people say, oh, she's only with him because he's rich, or whatever? And you think, well, yeah, but that's one reason to be with someone. Financial stability, being able to enjoy a life that you that you like love and you can go and do things that you wouldn't have the opportunity to do otherwise. Oh, he's, he's only with you because he's won a couple of trophies. Yeah, that's a great reason to have a manager around. Yeah. The feeling when we won the, the FA Cup, the feeling when we won the Carabao Cup, that's ace. Yeah. Ask Tottenham fans whether they trade that or not. Like, I think this whole thing of like, oh, he's only stayed because he's, he's got a couple of trophies. Of course he has. <laughs> yeah, you win trophies, you keep being the manager. That's fine. We can agree to that, surely. <laughs> Jesus Christ, like, most football teams, we're so lucky. I mean, even as United fans in the last decade, most football teams on earth never win trophies. No. Even the big ones. Newcastle haven't won a trophy in 50 years. Tottenham, who were great, supposedly, have won about one in the same period. Yeah. Like, there's big, big, big teams who never win anything. It's a good point. And the point fact that. that we've got a manager who, in, until he arrived, we hadn't won a trophy in six years, has won them in back-to-back -back seasons. Of course, you get another go. If he wins a trophy this year, he should get another go and I'm not saying you can finish 20th in the league and scrape a Carabao Cup win and you'll be alright but like winning trophies is a very valid reason to keep managing a football team so this whole thing of like oh great I bet your team unless you're Man City would have swapped the trophies that we've won for what you ever won in the last couple of years because it wasn't the same as we did like it just does my head in that um, and, and the fact that he's a very good cup manager he showed it with uh, Ajax, won a couple of cups, obviously got to the semi-final of the Champions League as well, um, and bar that sort of freakish 
30 minute hat trick from Lucas Moura should have got to the final really um, he's done very well at United as well in Cups and I think that's a great trait for a manager to have all the top managers have that like the difference between Conte and someone like Jose is a couple of Champions Leagues here and there yeah. Conte is a very good manager Jose is one of the best managers of all time the difference is the winning of, of trebles, the winning of Champions Leagues. And obviously Ten Hag's not done that yet, but if he can start adding a bit of league progress and league form to this consistent cup challenging and winning, then you've got yourself a top manager there. You know, the two greatest managers of all time in Sir Matt Busby and Sir Alex Ferguson, it was trophies, it was cups that helped them sort of get to where they needed to be. Yeah. I mean, Busby won the FA Cup in 1948 and Fergie did it in 1990 and then obviously built on that. And you saw what happened there. So I understand your point of view completely. And as a fan, just, you know, listen, I loved life under Ole, but nothing that we did under Ole in those was finishing second, the same with Jose when we finished second, came close to that feeling at Wembley when we beat City in that cup final. That just no. hit differently, as the kids say. Uh, let's talk about our predicted 11s. Jose, yeah. if you, you can go first. Yeah, and I think people, we always get carried away about how much rotation there's going to be. Be. and you, the temptation is let's change 11 players but it never happens because okay. you can't have zero coordination so I've kept Onana I've kept Dallow in there though brought him back to the right hand side Maguire and Evans both played at the weekend and they obviously came on at the weekend um, and they're going to start the game I think Martinez needs a bit of a rest he's not played a lot of football in the last 12 months um, and he's very important to United Delict the same um, Amas has come in as well for his first start now that might tweak around you might see Martinez at left back or you might see Casemiro at centre back but I think you know trying to keep players in their correct positions um, is a good idea then a midfield of Ugarte, Casemiro and Fernandez. I like this as a midfield and I think we've seen that Casemiro can offer something in the in the middle and final third yeah, the problem is bro. he's not offering enough in his own well you've got Ugarte there for, for that now so maybe we accept the fact that Casemiro is not going to be this dominating number six that he once was but surely he can pop a couple of balls into some nice areas against Barnsley as a slightly more advanced number eight so Ugarte's got to start get those two in there as well and then the front three was a trickier one I was tempted to keep Rashford in and sort of capitalise on the momentum of that goal but I've gone with Garnacho, who I think should start this game just because he's got you know what is it four goals and assists this season if you include the, uh, the community shield um, and he's not really starting, so he deserves a chance to start. Anthony again, um, we'll have to wait and see. There's an interesting quote on Anthony, I want to read this verbatim, because Ten Hag got so much stick for his treatment of Jadon Sancho when he said, you have to train consistently every single every single day to be featuring in the game. That was against Arsenal, before he took that break, wasn't it? Yeah. He basically said, the training sessions haven't been up to scratch and people lost their minds. He's just said about, about Anthony, talking about him playing in this game, he says, we have training every day and the players have to earn the right when the attitude is good and they show performance in training then they will play it's almost word for word what he said about Sancho mm -hmm. let's see if there's all this outcry how much of a disgrace how overly harsh how horrendous that is that it's Anthony that's on the receiving end of it rather than you know a, a more popular player in Jaden Sancho I think what he said then was fine what he's saying now is fine and the reaction was fake and overblown to say the least no it, it completely was it, it, when you watch that question that he's asked about Jaden Sancho after that Arsenal game and you see his reply there's absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever and for Jaden Sancho to take to Twitter or X or whatever to call it and do that post that he did was just wrong it just was it was just ridiculous and listen I don't care how many goals he assists he gets for Chelsea it was the right move for the manager to do what he did and I think at the end of the day Jadon Sancho needed to be moved on and he has been uh, yeah a lot of what you say makes sense to me I'm not I'm not sure he'll start with that front three though is okay. my is my sure. team slightly different I put Tom Eaton in because I love Tom Eaton and I think he might just give him a chance I know people go what about Bayern Day but I don't know sometimes he does these little ones where he puts mm. someone like Tommy in and so I, I was 50-50 on whether it'll be him or Bayern Day I think he might bring in one of the backup goalkeepers I've put Toby Collier in because I just wonder whether Eric Tanar feels I need to give this kid a run out not against Liverpool when we're 2-0 down like let's yeah. let's get him some minutes where it's not a nightmare for him like his only experience of playing for the Manchester United first team in a competitive game has been in one of the most difficult games you could go into yeah. And he, he didn't exactly have a great game, if I'm being brutally honest, but it wasn't his fault because he was given like a bit of a, a thankless task. Do you know what I mean? Liverpool are dominating, we're 2-0 down and you're replacing one of the most successful players in the history of football. Go on, off you go, son. Yeah. Get us back in it. And he's like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. So I'd like to see Collier start and I think he could start alongside a guy in Casemiro. I agree with what you said. I think Casemiro could be pushed further up. A guy would be good to see him get minutes. The back four is a bit of a change there. The low keeps his place. I think Maguire and Evans are capable of dealing with a League One opposition. I'd like to see Harry Amas get a start. I think the manager might give him one. And also, on the front three, 
I agree with what you said about Ganacho and Anthony. I just think you mentioned it. You said you you could understand him starting Marcus just to build on that momentum yeah. from the Southampton game, and I think he will. Yeah. I think if you look at Marcus two seasons ago, he had that record where he equaled Dennis Violet's record at home for goals. Some of those games were against like Charlton or whatever, yeah. where he was. He, I know he, he, he didn't always start, but he was given minutes against like lower league opposition in the cups or whatever just keep the momentum going and it works it kept him going and I wouldn't mind seeing that I wouldn't mind seeing Marcus maybe get 45 minutes and then you know rested but get involved in the chat in the comments and let us know your feelings on those predicted predicted 11s right let's not start with any nonsense about well don't well, you're not starting Diallo don't you like him no it's not that it's a predicted one you, you just said no you don't no like I don't him. like him but that's not the reason I've not picked him yeah, right. not picked I've him. just gave him a rest right. I like him <laughs> In contrast to Jay, which is weird. Don't know why I don't like him. <laughs> he ruined. He ruined Klopp's farewell tour. I'll never forgive him. Uh, also, send in your score predictions as well. Send in your videos. So get your camera out, like Jay is here. Like our, our wonderful model Jay is here. Film yourself. Say, I think it's going to be this. I think this guy's going to score. I think that guy's going to score. And send it to paddockmatchday at gmail dot com, uh, and you'll be featured at the start of the watch along. We have a little montage of everyone that's got involved. And if you want to be on that, you want to be featured on the watch along. Send in your predictions. Can we please. play a little game? Go on. Name this team. The seventh. Man United. The seventh in League One. Yeah. Yeah. With three wins, one draw, and two losses. And during the Carabao Cup this season, yeah. they have beaten Wigan on penalties, and they've beaten Sheffield United. Who is it? Barnsley. Well done. That sums up the opposition. Uh, with all that being said, give us your score prediction. <laughs> no, we're giving them. All right, go on then. Well, it's one of the best accents in the UK. Right. Not bad. Yeah, all right, I'll give you that. They is it Barnsley that were doing the old Moneyball New York City Stadium and all that? They play decent football, don't they? And they got to the I think they got to the Championship playoffs the year before last, and then they've been relegated. That's mad. Are you the fucking Barnsley Oracle? King of Barnsley. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're in League One, so United yeah. have obviously got to capitalise. And with that in mind, in terms of score prediction, uh, I know we won three 0 against Southampton, and obviously these aren't as good as that, but we don't win big often. And right. I'm going to assume that we're going to carry on not winning big. So I'm going to go 2-1 to Manchester United. <gasps> I know, and it's probably going to be one of them, oh, God, we're shit again, 10 hours, got to go. But I think we'll win them. Win them! Not said that since about six. I think we'll win them. Um, I think we'll beat them, and I think that we'll go through to the next round, because that's what 10 hours does, baby. Yeah, I, I get your point. I'll go, do you know what? No, I'll go 3-0. Back-to-back 3-0 wins. Why not, eh? Let's have a bit of that, eh? Thanks for watching. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs>